Welcome to Raiders on the Record, the podcast featuring Hastings High School Athletics. I'm Athletic Director Trent Hansen. My colleague Tim Hanneberg and I work together to bring you the stories of Raiders sports. We are thrilled to share conversations with the athletes, coaches, and alumni that represent Raider Nation. Check back weekly and be sure to share this podcast with your friends in the Raiders Network. Jeannie Castle is a 1982 Raider graduate. Her coaching career started at Jan School of Dance, followed by gymnastics coaching at Perpetual Motion, and then began coaching gymnastics at Hastings High School in 2007 as the head coach. Jeannie preaches compassion and respect as a coach and uses these skills to positively impact her athletes on a daily basis. Jeannie uses her experiences as a coach and mother to give great advice to parents coaches, and student athletes. All right, here we are with Jeannie Castle. Jeannie, to get to know you a little bit better, let's ask a couple questions here to get some background information on you. So the first one we got is your hometown, what high school you graduated from. And uh, if you want to, you can tell us the year you graduated from high school. If you don't want to reveal that information, you don't have to. Well, I am born and raised in Hastings, and I graduated from Hastings High School in 1982. Okay. All right. We won't do the math here, so don't worry about that. We'll just, <laughs> we'll just keep Three it going. Nine. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's hear about your family growing up. Uh, obviously, you said you were born and raised in Hastings. So what did that look like for you? Uh, did you live in town? Did you live out in the country? Talk about your mom, your dad, uh, where they worked at, your brothers, sisters, kind of any extended family that are around town as well? Sure. I am the oldest of six. Uh, my parents um, settled in Hastings. I come from a family-owned business in Hastings. Um, and we have extended family here, my grandparents, my, my dad's, some of his siblings. Um, one of his brothers owns another family-owned business they split off, they were together, um, electrical contracting and appliance. So, um, you know, when you're born and raised in a community with a business, you know, a lot of people, um, which has been great. Um, you know, it just, you get to know a lot of the people in the community and, and uh, get to know how awesome the people in our town are. So, um, like I said, I'm the oldest of six. So I had a lot of responsibility um, growing up and, uh, setting examples, all good, of course. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, so this is a sports podcast and we do circle around sports. So what do you think one of your best or one of your earliest sports memories was growing up? Wow. So I started, I, I kind of liked doing everything. My mom and dad let me start gymnastics and baton when I was about two and a half, three years old. So um, I continued to do that, but my fondest memories don't even evolve around that. It was basically growing up in the neighborhood and um, just all of the, the, the neighbor kids. We used to put together football games and baseball games and hockey, and it was boys and girls. And it, it was the greatest. I mean, I, we talk about it still today, how awesome it was and how much fun we had. And I, I think the sad part for me thinking about the generations now is that these kids really, they, they never got to experience growing up like we did. Um, I, it was just a lot different back then. So oh, one of my favorite early questions that we ask is your first job. And I always bring it up that a lot of the guests was detasseling corn. I don't think that was one of your first jobs, but let's, uh, let's hear about one of your first jobs growing up here in Hastings. Well, my first job obviously was going to work for my dad um, at his, um, we were a big electrical contractor. Um, so I, of course, was his minority at the same time. So it was twofold for him. Um, I loved it. It was fun. I, I worked in the office, but I also got to work out on the job a little bit. I have acquired um, electrical skills and uh, 
the the one thing I will say is, you know, working for your parents, you don't really get the opportunity to to try another job. But I did try corn detasseling for one day. Oh boy! And uh, found out that I'm highly allergic to pollen and ended up in the hospital. <laughs> so nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it seems like well, you and and the other people they uh, they don't last too long detasseling corn. <laughs> they uh, it just seems like the worst job of all time. So. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So let's get into your current occupation uh, outside of coaching. And then let's talk about your current role at Hastings High School uh, coaching as well. So I do have another full time job that I work besides coaching. I work for uh, DCA Title in Hastings. I do all of the new construction compliance and auditing. Um, do a lot of new construction builds where I disperse all the money. Um, I've been in the real estate business for many, many years. I was on the mortgage side and now I crossed over to the title side. So um, lo I love my job. Um, but in addition to that, yes, I am the, he the head coach for the Hastings High School gymnastics team. Wonderful. How many years have you been coaching uh, at Hastings High School with gymnastics? Oh, um, I believe, you know, it's really sad that I don't know the exact number. I believe I started coaching the high school in 07. Okay. So, Wonderful. Yeah. Well, I know Trent, our AD, he asks us this question all the time. And uh, so let's flip it on you here, Jeannie. So why do you think you coach? Why did you want to come back to Hastings High School, your alma mater, and coach at Hastings? Hastings? And what do you think some of those um, maybe skills or character skills are that sports taught you, especially gymnastics, that you try to instill in your girls? Okay. That's a lot of questions. Yeah, in I one. know. Sorry. <laughs> I should have broken I'll try it to keep it up. <laughs> so, um, well, I mean, as coaches, and, and I love Trent because he, um, you know, he just makes us really think about why we do what we do. And I, and I love that. It just keeps us fresh and it keeps us on our toes and just reinventing everything that we do. Um, and, and I coach to inspire young athletes to lead with integrity and respect and to commit to their passion and goals in life. So I am, um, I'm huge on goal setting. Um, I, I tell my girls all the time, if you don't set a goal, you have nothing to look forward to. Um, what are you shooting for? You know, what, what are your intentions? Um, so that's, that's a big one for me. And um, just teaching young women that they can do anything they set their mind to. And again, it, I think it really does go back to goals and um, keeping yourself grounded with those goals so that you don't lose sight of what your end result really, what you want it to be. Um, so let's see here. For me, um, a lot of the words that I talk about with the girls in the gym are, you know, compassion and respect, you know, and I, and I tell them a lot of times, if you can't respect yourself, you're not going to respect your teammates. So learn to love yourself so you can love each other. Um, and, and just be compassion, um, compassionate to your teammates. We, you don't know what that girl has experienced when she walks in the gym every night. Um, so just really, um, just be compassionate with your teammates and, and think about, you know, how you feel every day. It's, it's, it's not always easy to, you know, just be happy all the time. Mm -hmm. um, but respect is a big thing, um, respecting each other. Um, uh, let's see, what was another one of your questions. I think you got it. I was talking about the, the character skills that you try to embed in with your girls every single day. So I think you talked about compassion and respect. I think those are two kind of big cornerstones uh, mm -hmm. that, that sports teach you on a daily basis. Yes. Do, do you think that was something that um, you were taught in high school as well? Maybe a coach or a teacher pass that on to you, maybe a parent. Um, so where do you think those came from and why do you think they're just so important to you uh, in your coaching journey? So I Yes. Um, I think growing up in a large family just really teaches you a lot about um, 
you know, respect, compassion. Um, we're being, you know, one of six kids. Um, it's you're the same as the next, and you just we always um, we're told that you just never leave each other behind. You're always going to keep your siblings next to you. You're always going to walk together. Um, never leave any of them behind. So um, our parents were very, um, they weren't strict, but we, we earned everything that we had in life and, and we worked hard for it. So I do feel that that um, has a lot to do with, you know, um, why I coach and how I coach. So um, yeah, I just, I think that was, it, it came from my mom and dad. Definitely, sure. um, you know, and, and probably other coaches along the way, the coaches that I had growing up um, coach a lot differently than we do now. So <laughs> <That's> <laughs> a lot truth. of modifications yep. to that whole coaching technique since the mm -hmm. day I was, in, you know, in gymnastics, but it was all good. It's all a great learning curve for everybody. For sure. So let's rewind a little bit then to, you said you've coached for almost about 15 years now at, at Hastings High School. Talk about your coaching journey. Were you always the head coach? Did you start off as an assistant coach? Uh, did you coach anywhere before Hastings? And uh, why did you eventually come back to Hastings and start coaching here? Yeah, so um, while going way back, um, I really actually started coaching right out of high school for Jan School of Dance. Mm -hmm. Ironically, dance and baton but um, taught me a lot, you know, I was dealing with parents at such a young age um, was a good character builder. Um, but then fast forward to, um, I think 95, um, I had lost my mom and my girls were real little. And so I enrolled them at Perpetual Motion. And of course the, the owners there had found out that, that I was a gymnast and approached me right away. I think I was probably second or third week there with my girls in class. And they had talked me into, you know, coaching some classes for them. And, and I forgot how good it felt. Um, mm -hmm. It was amazing. And so I coached a perpetual motion for, boy, probably six or seven years. And then um, LB had opened a gym in Hastings and he had approached me and asked me if I would consider coming on board. So all club gymnastics and um, just, oh, it, it was fun helping him build that gym up and um, bringing those kids in and watching them grow, you know, from two-year-old parent talk classes to, you know, level six, level seven, level eight girls. And we had boys in there too, which I loved helping with the boys. Um, but I think just being able to give back, you know, um, why Hastings, because I'm born and raised in Hastings mm -hmm. and, um, giving back to the community that, you know, raised my generation and being able to continue that for future generations is, is important, um, to me. So we have a great community and our community sport, um, supports a lot of sports, um, so we're very fortunate in that respect, I think. For sure. So the way I think about this next question is, you know, back to the future, the doc pulls up in the DeLorean and he says, Jeannie, jump in. We, we got to go watch yourself coach at a young age. So if you had to go back in time, uh, what do you think that looked like when you were coaching at a young age or, or what do you think like something that, um, you know, now as a mature coach that you wish you would have told yourself when you first started off? Uh, I know for me, there's so many things that I did wrong right away with coaching and uh, just kicking myself along the way. But, um, you know, that's how we, that's how we grow and progress. But what do you think something it, that you know now uh, is with, when it comes to coaching that you wish you knew when you first started? Um, to be more confident with my decision up front and, and to trust my gut instinct um, that the decision I made is, is, the, is a good decision. Um, and, and probably not to be so intimidated by the parents. Um, so just, again, I think 
being more confident in in that initial decision that I made and why I made it. So, um, yeah, I mean, and and knowing that it's okay to admit when you're wrong, when you do make a bad decision or a bad call, you know, just admitting it and and moving on is is a big deal. So, yeah, for sure. Obviously, there's many rewarding things when it comes to coaching, and you've had a lot of experience over the years uh, with coaching. So what do you think, with your experiences, what do you think one of the best or one of the most rewarding experiences have been coaching over, like we already talked about for the last 15 years at Hastings, maybe it was at Perpetual Motion, uh, maybe it was at Jan School of Dance. So what do you think one of the best or one of the most rewarding experiences have been when it comes to coaching for you? Um, For me... The, the first thing I think of is, is watching the girls reach their goals, no matter how big or small they are. Um, and it's really fun when we have girls that come into our program that have never done gymnastics or are that backward teach yourself, you know, they teach themselves in the backyard on the trampoline or, you know, their girlfriends in the backyard. Um, just, just watching them grow. Um, and personality wise too, not even so much with the gymnastic skills, but just watching their personality flower as the season goes on and, and, and watching the girls connect. Um, yeah, it's just the little successes are probably the biggest and the most fun to celebrate with those kids. Mm -hmm. And I know we talked about it too, right before, uh, we started recording here too, you're getting a lot of your former athletes coaching with you now so what do you think that feeling has been like you know the, those girls that you coached that are now giving back to the, the girls that are now in uh, high school so what what has that experience been like for you so so for me I mean that to me is probably one of the 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 greatest ways to um define success um knowing that your kids respect you and they the biggest thing I think too is, is that they thank me at the end of practice every night. Um, not, not all of them, but there's a large group of them. You know, there's a large number of kids that just do that. Um, they text you out of the blue just to tell you that they had some sort of a success. It doesn't even have to be gymnastics. They're just sharing something with me. Um, but yeah, like you said, the biggest thing is when they ask if they can come back and coach with you. Um, just seeing them succeed outside of the gym is, is a huge, um, accomplishment. I think for any coach to feel that, um, that you had just a small part of, of them achieving that, you know, decision and achieving their goals. Um, just, yeah, I don't know. Having them come back has been really fun though, because mm -hmm. now they're on the other side of the fence looking yep. in. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Neat. So tell us about you growing up. Who was a coach that had a huge impact on your life? You know, maybe someone that really inspired you to get into coaching, you know, dance or gymnastics. Um, so who do you think that was that coach was when you were growing up? Did they teach you something specific that really stuck with you, an important lesson or anything else along the way that really kind of rung true and, and you kind of held on to the rest of your life? Um. Yeah, when I was younger, um, my, ironically, my baton coach, um, her name was Jeannie. She was um, very inspiring. I mean, she just taught me not to give up, not to ever let anybody tell you that you couldn't do it. Um, and, and don't let somebody define your, you know, define who you were by telling you you could or couldn't do something. Um, she was, she was just a great role model. And I learned a lot from her. She, she really taught me a lot. Um, you know, and, and fast forwarding to now, um, I guess two standouts for me. Um, I had the awesome opportunity to work at the high school for 10 years. And at that time I got to work with Paul Veit. And, and I have to say, he just, you know, just working with him and his passion and, 
he mentors everybody every single day that that comes, you know, into his into his um, presence. Um, he makes everyone feel so important, but he also teaches you to be calm and just take, you know, just take everything for what it's worth and and just make the best of everything. Um, and and today, Mark Sickich, who is a he's a St. Paul Park retired coach, but he's also a judge. He judges gymnastics. He judges swimming. I coached uh, his daughter over the years, and he still mentors me. He still comes in when I ask him to to help me push the girls and and work with them and and help them, you know, f- how to figure out to tweak something. Um, you you know as a coach Tim that it's it's always easier for your kids to hear someone else other than you tell them the same thing you've been telling them for you know weeks. Um, it it just has a different impact. But he's been a huge um, supporter and just a great influence for me as well. So um, yeah, there's just a lot of people, but I mean those are probably my standouts. Looking back and looking forward. Nice. What about an assistant coach that you've worked alongside with? You know, those are, you know, those kind of coaches are are amazing too. And, and they're coming and giving uh, influence on you and your girls. Uh, what about an assistant coach that you're working with on a daily basis? I'm sure you've had a lot over the years that really stood out, but what do you think is uh, maybe one or maybe a handful of assistant coaches that, uh, like I said, you've been working side by side with that have really shown you something or taught you something or had a big influence on your girls? Yep. So, um, I, I would say, and I've had some, you know, great girls, great gals come in and help me coach, but I guess probably my biggest standout and I'm probably a little biased would be my daughter, Courtney. Mm -hmm. Um, it just working with her, I coached her all her gymnastics career. And then for her to decide that she wanted to come in and, and coach alongside of me was, it was huge. Um, so I just, I can't put into words how, how much it meant to me to be able to have her next to me coaching um, with me. And she, she keeps me grounded. Um, we still talk every day. She asks me how things are going. So the last two years, she hasn't been able to coach in the gym with me because she took a job promotion. She's a nurse and, you know, it's just taken her down a different path. And I'm so proud of her for doing that, but she still comes in and, um, the girls love to see her and she just, she keeps me grounded. She, mm-hmm. she gives me, you know, we can bounce, I can bounce things off of her. Um, but when she was in the gym, she could really relate to some of those girls that have the head games and anxiety because she, she had a lot of that herself. So for me, my generation, we were just told, do it, do it, do it. You don't question your coach. You just do it. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. I, I miss her, but honestly, my previous gymnasts that coach with me, I have um, Emma Fendrick and Rachel Hughes and Annika Troberg, and they're, they're all just great. Like I said, they, they keep me on track. They keep me, you know, um, just in touch with the girls and and, and it is, it's fun having them back in the gym after I coached them for so many years. Um, it's, it's very rewarding. It is. Oh, that's neat. The next question then for you, Jeannie, I always like this one and, and you're my first gymnastics person. So this is going to be interesting to hear. I like hearing <laughs> about the favorite opponent or kind of meet or tournament that everyone kind of gets up to circles on the calendar. And then one that you always know that's going to bring the best out of you. So, you know, when it, when it comes to some of the older athletes, it always seems like it was park, no matter what the sport was. It's always, Oh, I love park. Uh, we love playing against park. You know, that rivalry, um, recently, a lot of St. Thomas Academy with hockey and, and football. Uh, so question for you then with gymnastics, what's in a particular opponent or event or something along those lines that you always look forward to as a coach. Once again, it's, it brings out the best in your girls and you know, they're, they're always going to rise to the occasion. So who do you think that opponent was, or maybe tournament or event? Sure. Um, opponent, I would say probably for the last three or four years, um, is Simley because we're very evenly matched. So, um, it, it is, it is a big deal. Um, 
for the girls to kind of prepare for that meet. And we actually just hosted them two weeks ago yeah. and um, we beat them this year. So nice. um, that was a, that was a great, that was a great success for the girls and, and for all of us. Um, as far as an event for me, the greatest event is beam because it is by far the hardest. Um, it's the, the hardest mental event out of all four events that we compete. Um, so for me, you know, when the girls um, stick a beam routine, it's amazing. We go crazy. We scream, we yell, we jump, we hug. It's, it's a big deal. But I think even the bigger and um, even more successful beam routine is the gymnast who gets up there that's been working on a new skill. And she's just been working and working and working on it. And she gets up at the meet and and does it. She may not succeed, but even if she falls, we all cheer like there's no tomorrow because she went for it. And I mean, you're you're never gonna know unless you go for it. I mean, I, and I tell the girls that I'm like, what's the worst that could happen? You know, you you might fall, you just get back up and you keep going. Big deal. Yeah. Next week you're gonna do it and you're not gonna fall. So you have to get over that fear of failure and you have to fail to, to succeed. So anyway, so that's, that I think is by far um, the greatest feeling. For sure. So we talked about one of the most, um, we talked about a rewarding thing with coaching, but looking over your last 15 years, what do you think one of your favorite moments or experiences has been as a high school coach? You know, you talked about coaching side by side with your daughter, uh, but anything else that really stands out along the last 15 years here at Hastings High School, uh, like I said, a favorite moment or experience as a high school coach, what do you think that would be? Oh, well, that is super hard. I There's don't even lot. know if I, I know. could I'm just, sorry. I know, I don't even think we I We only ask the hard that. questions here. We are. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, there's so many. I don't know if I could just pick one. Um, we can go top five I... if you really need to. So that's okay. <laughs> Um, I think, I think the greatest thing is each season, the girls have that goal of, of meeting and exceeding, you know, that team score. Um, and, and lately the last few years they've done it mm -hmm. and it's been awesome. Um, you know, so each year they got to kind of raise the bar a little bit more, which is kind of hard for them to do because it's, you hit that comfort level. It's like, wow, you know we could probably stay at this. And it's like, really, do you want to, or do you want to work a little harder and, and feel that joy of even greater success? Um, but it's just, you know, these girls are like my kids, Tim. And to watch them succeed, it's like when you watch your son or daughter get on a two-wheeler for the first time and mm -hmm. you let go of the bike and they take off. I mean, it really is for me to watch the girls succeed and um just hit those goals and and stick that vault or you know nail that release on bars or do that twist on floor stick the beam routine it's just it's it's joy i mean it just fills my heart every single time the girls do something that they've set out to to do for themselves so yeah i can't pick one but that would be my the best way to explain it <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know exactly what you mean. As a, as a coach, I I truly feel I, I'm along the same lines as you when you treat them like your own kids and you go through the highs with them, you go through the lows and, you know, you're, you're out there, you know, you're talking about the beam, you're on the beam with them every single time, you know, and you're going through the same routine with them. And, and when they fall, you're hurting when they, when they succeed, you're, you're, uh, you're, you're feeling great too. So it's, and then that's just one event, you know, and you're going through every single event like that with every single girl. So it just, that kind of is, is that feeling at the end of the day is just uh, exhaustion sometimes because you're going through every single thing with them every single time. So I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. You pick them up when it's bad and you, you pick, you know, you just keep pushing them along for the good. So mm -hmm. it is, they are, they're like my kids. <laughs> I definitely agree. Last couple questions then for you. Looking back on your experiences, you know, you talked about coaching at Jan School Dance, Perpetual Motion almost 15 years here at the high school. If you had to give parents or coaches two pieces of advice, what do you think they would be and why? Oh, parents. Um, 
and I do tell the parents to do this usually earlier in the season. Um, just communicate with your daughter, ask her what her goals are and ask her, um, what about gymnastics she is really loving this season? Um, just, just keep asking them, you know, they know they're going to come home and they can tell if they had a good day or a bad day, but just asking them, what, what are your goals? What is, what are you looking to accomplish this season? And, and then also give them grace when they're just not up to talking about it. You know, it's, there's, we all have good days and we all have bad days. So just take them all for what they're worth. Awesome. Same kind of question now for a different audience. If you had to give student athletes two pieces of advice, what do you think they would be and why? Um, I guess I would probably say live life without saying what if. Um, we know, you know, being older, more mature in life, and, and looking back and saying, oh, what if I would have done this? What if I would have done that? Um, don't, you know, just don't, don't do it. Live life and, and just live it to, to the fullest. Um, and um, to succeed, you have to fail. Mm -hmm. And then when you fail, that creates the beauty of your success. I mean, that's, that's, I feel that's, that's the best way to succeed in life is to just um, take, take those failures and, and, and pull the positive from them. So. Yeah. For sure. Could not agree with you more. You need, that's all we got for you here today. The final couple minutes are yours. Uh, anything else uh, I didn't talk about that you want to talk about any questions I didn't ask you, uh, any <laughs> shout outs you want to give, whatever you want to do. Like I said, the mic is yours <laughs> in the last couple minutes are yours. Um, you know, for me, I, I just, I think my parents every week in our week in a glance email, um, without the parents, uh, we wouldn't have programs to coach. We wouldn't have the kids to coach. I thank my parents every day for giving me the time I get to spend in the gym with them during gymnastics season. I get to spend more time with their kids than they do. Mm -hmm. You know, they come from school, they spend a few hours with me, they go home, they go to bed. So I'm, very grateful for that opportunity to work with those kids and grateful for the families to let me do that. Um, I guess for me, I just always try to see the positive in everything every single day and every night think of three things that, um, that made your day better and, and just be thankful for that. Um, and and I, I have a thing in my office that says, don't wish for it, work for it. So if you want to get somewhere, you got to work for it. It's not going to be handed to you. Yep. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, Jeannie, thank you so much. I really appreciate the time. Yeah. Thanks, Tim. It was great. Thank you. Thank you.